around 450,000 years ago, during the height of the Anglian glaciation, an event of titanic proportions reshaped the geography of northwestern Europe and altered the trajectory of human history. This event, known as the English Channel Megaflood, was not a gradual erosion of a land bridge, but a catastrophic deluge that violently carved a wide and deep valley between Britain and continental Europe. It severed what had been a continuous land mass, transforming the British peninsula into a true island in geological terms. The consequences of this ancient flood were more than geographical. The transformation of the land profoundly disrupted hominin migration routes, likely contributing to periods of human depopulation and isolation in Britain. Key archaeological sites, such as Boxgrove and Swanscombe, which lie on opposite sides of the event's timeline, offer a glimpse into how this cataclysm impacted the early human presence in Britain. According to research published in Nature, the flood was initiated by a vast lake that formed in the southern North Sea Basin. This lake was fed by powerful rivers such as the Rhine and Thames, and it was trapped to the north by advancing ice sheets and blocked to the south by the Weald Artois Chalk Ridge, a land bridge that once spanned what is now the Dover Strait. As glacial meltwater poured into the basin, the lake's water level steadily rose until the chalk ridge was breached. When that happened, it unleashed one of the largest mega-floods in Earth's history, with water roaring into the basin of the future English Channel at a rate estimated to reach one million cubic metres per second. Over several weeks or even months, this unimaginable torrent gouged out a valley tens of miles wide and up to fifty metres deep, cutting through chalk bedrock and leaving behind scour marks and plunge pools now preserved beneath the channel's waters. Between 400,000 and 100,000 years ago, the dominant hominins in Europe shifted from Homo heidelbergensis to early Neanderthals. These groups experienced tremendous environmental stress during glacial advances, and megafloods added another level of catastrophe. Prior to this catastrophe, Britain was not an island but a peninsula of Europe, accessible to migrating hominin populations via broad forested plains in what is now the Southern North Sea. One of the most important archaeological windows into this world is the Boxgrove site in West Sussex, dated to approximately 500,000 years ago, just before the suspected timing of the flood. At Boxgrove, Archaeologists have uncovered the oldest known hominin remains in Britain, belonging to an early Homo heidelbergensis, as well as hundreds of flint tools and butchered animal bones. The site provides a detailed snapshot of life on the edge of a chalk cliff by an ancient coastal plain. Hominins here were skilled hunters, targeting large herbivores and using sophisticated Aculean hand axes. Importantly, Boxgrove shows evidence of a stable, thriving hominin population benefiting from the rich ecology of a warm interglacial environment. But this world was doomed. The Anglian glaciation swept in shortly after Boxgrove was inhabited, covering much of northern Europe with ice and radically altering landscapes. The formation and eventual collapse of the North Sea proglacial lake would have erased entire ecosystems. For populations living in lowland valleys and river corridors, the flood was likely an instant death event, destroying habitats, drowning foraging grounds, and severing the natural routes through which these groups had migrated and exchanged genes. The Swanscombe site, located on the south bank of the Thames near modern-day Dartford, gives us a rare glimpse into life in Britain after the flood. Dated to around 400,000 years ago, Swanscombe is best known for the discovery of a remarkably well-preserved early Neanderthal brain case, or late Homo heidelbergensis, but let's just call it Neanderthal. This site sits geologically above the Anglian deposits, indicating it was occupied after the floodwaters had receded and the landscape had stabilised. The fact that humans returned to Britain after the mega-flood is important, but so is the gap. There is an apparent hiatus in occupation following the Anglian event, lasting tens of thousands of years. Some scholars believe the flood created topographic, and hydrologic barriers that limited or prevented further migrations into Britain until more favourable conditions returned. When humans did return, they entered a Britain that had been geographically transformed. River systems had been reorganised, coastlines redrawn and access routes altered. 
The Thames no longer flowed directly into the North Sea Basin, but had been captured by the Channel River, a new fluvial system carved by the flood that funneled rivers like the Thames and Rhine through the English Channel. This rerouting would have changed estuaries, tidal zones, and animal migration patterns, everything early humans relied upon. Importantly, the 450,000-year megaflood did not create a permanent island right away. While the Wheel d'Artois Ridge was catastrophically breached, the sea level during glacial periods remained far lower than today, exposing land bridges across the Strait of Dover. These relict land bridges continued to allow human and animal migration during glacial low stands for many millennia afterward. However, the character of the land bridge had changed. What had once been a wide, continuous plain was now deeply incised and flanked by steep-walled valleys. This made crossing more difficult, especially for large herds or early humans lacking boats. It was during later glacial cycles, especially around 160,000 to 130,000 years ago, and finally during the Holocene sea level rise after 10,000 years ago, that the connection was permanently submerged, rendering Britain a true island. Thus, the 450,000-year megaflood was a turning point, a moment when Britain's geological and ecological trajectory began to diverge from that of the continent. Even if not an immediate isolation, it introduced barriers that would become more pronounced with time, contributing to repeated phases of human abandonment and recolonization. The English Channel megaflood of 450,000 years ago was more than a geologic curiosity. It was a pivotal event in the story of early humans in northwest Europe. By tearing apart the land bridge between Britain and France, the flood disrupted the migrations of hominins such as those found at Boxgrove, possibly causing regional extinctions or displacement. It set in motion a chain of environmental changes that shaped the recolonization of Britain, as seen at Swanscombe, and laid the groundwork for future isolation. For tens of thousands of years afterward, Britain would be a land at the edge, sometimes connected, sometimes cut off, but forever changed by a flood of ice and stone. As we uncover more from the submerged valleys of the English Channel, we continue to rewrite the story of how geography and climate shaped the fate of human ancestors. In the depths of that ancient flood lies a powerful reminder that even in prehistory, the forces of nature could redraw the boundaries of the human world. As ice sheets expanded from Scandinavia and the Alps, they transformed river systems into erratic, volatile channels. Among these, the Danube River, Europe's second longest and arguably its most historically significant, became the centerpiece of a series of massive glacial flooding events. The middle of the Anglian glaciation marked a time when tectonic pressures, climate extremes and glacial blockages conspired to turn the Danube into a dangerous, transforming force that likely altered the course of human evolution in Central Europe. Now let's examine the causes and consequences of proglacial lake formation, the sudden drainage of these lakes into lowland basins, and the archaeological evidence, both preserved and lost, of early human populations impacted by these cataclysms. By reconstructing these ancient flood events, we can begin to understand whether entire human populations were wiped out in sudden death events, and what that might mean for our understanding of human resilience in the face of prehistoric climate disasters. The Anglian glaciation was one of the most extensive glacial advances in the last two million years. Ice sheets reached as far south as central Germany, covering areas well beyond the limits of later glaciations like the Devensian or Worm. In terms of geography, the Scandinavian ice sheet expanded across Poland and northern Germany, while alpine glaciers surged northward from the Alps, pressing into the Danube basin. This convergence of ice from both north and south acted like a vast natural dam. Major rivers, including the Elbe, Vistula and Danube, were trapped, rerouted or fragmented. As meltwater from the warming margins of glaciers pooled against these ice walls, enormous proglacial lakes formed. In regions such as Upper Austria, Western Hungary and Transylvania, lake systems accumulated hundreds of cubic miles of water behind ice and moraine blockages. Eventually, the pressure became too great. At the heart of this transformation was the Danube River, 
Unlike most major European rivers, the Danube flows eastward, eventually emptying into the Black Sea. But during the Anglian period, the river's path was not so straightforward. Blockages to the north prevented water from flowing toward the Carpathian Basin. Glacial moraines diverted tributaries and stranded valleys, while meltwater continued to accumulate. At key moments during this time, these lakes reached their tipping points. Ice dams failed, moraines collapsed. The result was not a gradual drainage, but rather mega-floods, hydrological disasters of almost unimaginable scale. These floods may have discharged thousands of cubic miles of water over the course of just days or weeks. They carved new valleys, redirected tributaries, and altered the topography of entire regions. Evidence from other parts of the world, such as the Missoula floods in North America, provides a vivid analogue for understanding the likely magnitude of these events. In some places, the Danube's floodwaters would have surged across dry plains, turning savannas and forests into temporary inland seas. In others, it would have gouged deep channels, leaving behind terraces, sediment deposits, and hanging valleys that remain visible in the landscape today. Prior to the Anglian glaciation, hominin populations, likely archaic forms of Homo heidelbergensis, inhabited much of Central Europe. Fossils from Bielsingsleben, Mauer, and Atapuerca suggest a human presence that was widespread and increasingly adapted to cooler climates. These early humans used Atulian tools, hunted large game, and may have constructed rudimentary shelters or utilized caves for protection. The Danube and its tributaries would have been lifelines for these populations. River valleys provided not only fresh water, but also migration routes, access to game, and locations for raw materials such as flint and quartzite. Seasonal flooding, under normal circumstances, would have fertilized the floodplains and created lush environments rich in resources. But the Anglian mega-floods were not normal circumstances. When proglacial lakes burst, they would have unleashed torrents powerful enough to drown entire ecosystems. Any hominin groups living along the banks of the Danube, especially in low-lying basins like those in present-day Hungary and Serbia, would have had no warning. Archaeological layers, including hearths, butchered animal bones and stone tools, may have been swept away, buried or scattered across wide floodplains. It is not hyperbole to suggest that whole communities could have been obliterated in minutes. Despite the violence of these floods, their traces remain. In the Danube Valley and surrounding basins, paleogeologists have discovered thick layers of flood sediments mixed with erratic boulders and fine silt that can only be explained by turbulent water flow. Elevated terraces along the Danube and Tissa rivers may represent former flood levels. In regions such as the Wachau Valley in Austria and the Iron Gates of Romania and Serbia, Stratified sediments indicate periods of rapid water flow followed by stagnation, suggesting glacial lake drainage events. Unfortunately, the archaeological evidence is less clear. Many Paleolithic sites in Central Europe have suffered from millennia of erosion, looting, agriculture and development. However, a curious pattern emerges. There is a notable gap in the archaeological record for parts of Central Europe during the peak of the Anglian glaciation. Sites that were once active go silent. Some caves show abandonment, while others preserve only the remains of animals, not humans. Is this simply a preservation issue, or is it evidence of regional extinction? It is plausible that some early human populations were eliminated entirely by these mega-floods. In lowland areas, especially near the Great Lakes of the Hungarian Plain and the Banat region of Romania, floodwaters may have drowned entire family groups. Others may have fled forced to retreat south into the Balkans or west into the unglaciated parts of France and Spain. If these displaced groups carried their genes and cultures with them, then the Anglian floods may have helped shape the next phase of human evolution by compressing populations into refugia. How do humans survive a mega-flood? One answer is, not easily. But adaptation is central to our species. Those who survived the Anglian floods would have been the ones most able to detect environmental change and respond quickly, whether through migration, innovation, or social cooperation. These survivors likely clustered in refugia, such as the Dinaric Alps, the Carpathians, or the Black Sea coast, where they could find shelter and stable ecosystems. 
Over time, memory may have formed around these catastrophic events. While this is speculative, the oral traditions of later Homo sapiens, full of flood myths and deluge stories, may echo deeper collective experiences. Though Homo heidelbergensis likely lacked symbolic language in the way modern humans do, the trauma of disaster can still shape behavior across generations. Furthermore, it is worth considering the evolutionary implications. Catastrophic events like mega floods exert intense selective pressures. Populations that survive are often those with advantageous traits, whether cognitive, social, or physiological. The Anglian glaciation, therefore, may have acted as an evolutionary bottleneck in Central Europe, concentrating specific adaptive traits that were later inherited by Neanderthals and possibly even Homo sapiens. The middle of the Anglian glaciation was not merely a cold and desolate time, it was an age of upheaval, marked by vast floods that drowned valleys, erased river systems, and perhaps extinguished entire human communities. The Danube River, once a source of life and connection, became a pathway of death and transformation. Hominin groups who once thrived along its banks may have perished in a matter of days, their tools and bones buried in layers of gravel and silt. And yet, life did not end. The survivors moved, adapted, remembered. The landscapes they returned to were new, carved by ice and water, but still habitable. The story of these ancient mega-floods is not just one of destruction, it is also one of rebirth. For in the wake of every cataclysm, there is always the human response, endurance, adaptation, and renewal. In this way, the floods of the Anglian glaciation were not merely episodes in geological history, they were evolutionary crucibles, testing the resilience of our ancestors and shaping the course of our journey as a species. And as the rivers settled back into their beds, carving new paths through the land, early humans once again walked their banks, changed, but not broken. Thank you for watching and commenting and subscribing.